past few days and we had a cold front blow in last night got our power and uh, turned out there was a transformer right in front of my house so it was um, pretty nasty trying to get the power back on last night with the dogs barking here because they were right outside my home but anyway uh, I'm gonna go try to get some chores done I'm gonna go take care of the goats check on Joe see how she's doing in her new stall so I just got down here to the barn we put a new stall up for Joe um, last week when Matt was off and I'm gonna see how she did in it by herself last night I hope it didn't stress her out too bad but she is pretty close to having babies go babies Wouldn't there be lights Jojo I hear you did you do your new stall good morning Jojo Good morning, Josephine. Oh, look at you. Look how big she's getting to be. I'm gonna do a ligament check. I've been checking her every day. Back up, babe. The ligaments will be pretty well non-existent um, when they're getting ready to have a baby. And hers have been thinning out. So you can still fill them a little bit. So like if you go down the spine, and this is kind of dark in here, and then it kind of wise off the spine. There are two ligaments, they feel like pencils. Rose described that on wholesome roots and it was so much help for me, but I can still fill them. Um, barely, but I can still fill them. But let's have a look at you girl. I mean, her udders are getting really swelled up and she's feeling large, aren't you baby? Aren't you mama? Yeah. Yeah. So we actually built a small stall inside of a large horse stall and we moved the milk stand in here. And then if Sabrina looks like she's gonna have babies, we're gonna build a mirror image stall on this side. Um, and it's pretty easy to take down out of this horse stall. Good morning, girls. Hi. Good morning. Hi, Glenda. Hi. Look at your little tail go. Glenda thinks she's a puppy dog. Hey, Loria. Hey, pretty girl. Hi, pretty girl. Burr, guys, it's cold out here. Um, I need to uncover my plants. I had to cover them up last night because it got below freezing again. It's supposed to get below freezing again tonight. Then hopefully we're done with it. <laughs> I've been just using these blankets to cover this mini tunnel. It works. Yesterday, I had the plastic off of the low tunnel completely, trying to get the rain that was supposed to come. Actually, I took it off Friday morning. It was in the 50s, so I thought it was safe. And I wanted to make sure I got the plastic put back on before the storm came. So when the wind started kicking up, I came out here and I just went ahead and watered them and I used some fish emulsion. And then it started raining on me. As soon as I got the water on them, it started raining on me. Got the plastic all back up there, and it quit raining. Guys, I was soaked and a little frustrated. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna show you how the radish babies are doing. So yesterday, these guys were getting pounded. You can see there's like sand washed over some of them, but I think they're gonna make it okay. Hopefully these little bitty sprouts are the carrots, but I'm not sure the ones there But I'm not sure so we'll just have to see I need to get out here and pull some weeds Looks like you guys some of these tomatoes are a foot tall. I still have almost four weeks to last frost Today I'm going to tell you a little bit about our top five homesteading goals for this year my husband's might be a little different, so they may not be ours. They may just be my top five goals for this year. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna show you over here, 
my blueberries. Now, look at the buds. Oh my goodness, look at them. We bought these blueberries, uh, I'm trying to remember, sometime this past winter. We picked them up from a farm in Kentucky called Promised Land Blueberries. Um, a great family. They have lots of great blueberries to choose from and they just know a ton about them. They are actually hoping to move soon, so if you need some blueberries and you're local, get a hold of Promised Land Blueberries. My first goal then is I need to get those blueberries in the ground. That means I've got to figure out where they're going to be planted. My here come the dogs. <laughs> My first goal is to get them in the ground, and that means I've got to make sure where I want them. Uh, we've talked about putting them up in the hill behind the house here because we think the soil is really acidic and blueberries like acidic soil, but we're not totally sure. My second goal is to get a water line put in down by the cabin, which means I may want to put the blueberries down there. We really need to get it figured out because they need to be in the ground. Um, we were told that they could stay in the pots like that as long as we needed them to, as long as they had adequate water and some shade. But I don't want to leave them like that forever and I obviously want them to grow bigger so we can have lots of blueberries, a lot of fresh blueberries. Obviously getting water down by the cabin is an extremely important goal for us. Once we have water down by the cabin, we can put more livestock on the farm again and we can plant more things we'd like to put apple orchards out and a pumpkin patch and other things so it's really important and vital for us to have a water source down by the cabin so you've seen my tomato starts you've seen them there's a lot of them and there's some that are tiny they're not even that big yet so it's really important that we don't waste that, um, that we eat what we grow, that we get all the nutrition from this farm that we possibly can. We're growing it, we're going to use it. And we've never had any problems with the waste before. We have, we eat a lot of things out of our garden, whatever we can't use, either the chickens get, the cats get, the dogs get, if it's not vegetables, obviously. <laughs> Um, nothing goes to waste around here, which is good, but we want to make sure we continue not wasting and we continue to use what we grow. We're not afraid of living off our farm. That's a big goal of ours, to be able to grow at least 75% of our own food. Grow our own food is such a big thing. So along the lines of being able to do that, and being able to rely less on the supermarket, we want to raise out meat chickens this year. And that's something I've wanted to do for a couple of years, but this year, I'm gonna get it done. We're gonna have our own batch of sea monsters. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we, we hunt. And so there's game and there's fish but we want to be able to have more, more things that we can grow here, and chickens is definitely one of those things. I'd love to have a few of my own turkeys too. Look at this. Oh, the rain did a number on this. I gotta get things picked up. It stormed, and you can see where the dirt built up. The dirt just really like it piled over. It looked like there was a waterfall over this hose yesterday. It was crazy. I wish you were gonna have a baby. Are you gonna have a baby, Bina? I really hope you do. We don't know if she got bread or not. I would really, really love it if she had one little doling. She was bred to Nubian. And uh, I would really love to have a new pine. I have one more goal my top on my top five homesteading goals for this year, for 2019 is a greenhouse. <laughs> I need a greenhouse. You've seen all the starts in my house. I need a greenhouse. One of the things Matt and I will be working on this year is getting a greenhouse built. We have looked at several different plans. Justin Rhodes recently built one. Well, I guess technically Jason from Sow the Land built one for the Rhodes family and it looks pretty awesome. So there's a lot of options out there. I don't know what we're going to do, but I definitely need a greenhouse 
little bit chilly, a little bit brisk out there. So I'm inside with a cup of coffee <laughs> so that I can finish up this video. So I told you my top five homesteading goals for this year. I'm gonna get the fruit in the ground. I want to make sure we eat the things we grow, we don't waste. I need a greenhouse. We will be raising meat chickens and we'll be getting a water line in. So that's my five um, goals for this year. But I wanted to also share with you some long-term goals that we have for the farm. Uh, when we bought this farm, uh, the fencing all pretty well needs to be replaced. Let's put it that way. It is falling down in some places. There are complete holes in some places. It all needs to be redone. And that is a big goal for us. To get perimeter fencing done here, we have got an estimate of around, I think around twenty-five, twenty dollars or $25,000. And I think that's mostly us doing it ourselves around the whole 92 acres or whatever it is. And uh, that, that's a big chunk of change. Uh, and it weighs on us to get it done because it's another thing we need if we want to put some cattle out. We want to do rotational grazing like Joel Salatin, but we still need a perimeter fencing even though we'll be using hot wire inside of that. So that, that's a big goal for us long term. Another one is we would like to have some sort of an outbuilding, like a pole barn, pretty good size building built, or we'd like to build it ourselves. Inside that building, I want a commercial kitchen so that I can do a lot more canning and maybe eventually make some things that I can sell, bread and whatnot. We also want it to be able to offer a space for classes that we can offer whether we teach them or we have somebody come in to teach and it would be a great space for day camps for summer camps and things like that which are all things that I have planned long term for this farm um, ultimately the biggest long term plan I have is for my husband to not have to work away from home anymore and to bring him home and I think that I think sometimes that he thinks that we're not ever gonna get there and I pray about this all the time I want him home I want him to be here with us enjoying this farm enjoying the children and that was the whole point to buying a farm to start with was so he didn't miss out like he did before Levi passed away so we need him home <laughs> so that's definitely the biggest goal for this farm um so i'm sorry <laughs> uh thank you so much to the right farm for putting this collaboration together and let me be a part of another one of your playlists i also want to thank the holistic homestead uh, for tagging me and i want to tag a couple of ladies Shayna from Grace Homestead Farm and Lisa from the Petite Plantation. You ladies are next. I can't wait to see what your goals are for this year and be rooting for you, sharing in your dreams and your plans. Have a beautiful, blessed day.